everybody. Today, we are just going to be talking about why we moved to Spain, how we moved to Spain, the things we love about Spain, the things that we don't love, don't love <laughs> about Spain. We only have one mic, so we're going to be passing back and forth, but just bear with us, all right? With that being said, oh, why did I want to move to Spain? So I wanted to do something different after, after graduation. I've always been interested in cultures and learning about different differences in between people. So for that reason, I really wanted to travel. For me, I knew that after graduation, I was not ready to commit to a full career or to go to grad school. I just wasn't ready for that. So I was really just looking to see what other thing I could do that would allow me to travel and be doing some sort of work, I guess. The reason we chose Spain is because we studied abroad in Sevilla. We had an amazing time. Like, <laughs> it, it was a time for both of us where we were outside of our comfort zones completely, being in a new country, having to speak a foreign language every day. We fell in love with Sevilla and we fell in love with with Spain in general. Flamenco, food here in Andalusia. So for that reason, we really wanted to, to come back to Southern Spain. I was scrolling through TikTok, as one does, and I came across the page of someone who was in Spain and teaching English, and she shared the program that she was doing it through. The North American Language and Cultural Assistance Program. Um, so that's what we were doing. Yeah, I found it on TikTok, and then I decided that's what I wanted to do. I love working with kids and to be in Spain, so. Each class is different. I had an experience where I could connect uh, on a deeper level with most of my kids. We would just talk in English and ask each other how our days were, what type of music we liked. I have never thought about the idea of being a teacher before. The first week, I was like very nervous standing in front of the class. But the more you do it, the more comfortable you become with it. I taught at a primaria, which is an elementary school. For me, it was super fun. The kids are so sweet. They are very loving and affectionate. I would get hugs mm -hmm. from the whole entire classroom. That would almost knock me over. But everyone's experience is different. We'll talk more about the how. The program starts in October, October 1st. So we got our placement. We were very kind of disappointed because we were hoping to be placed in a city, um, but we got placed in a pueblo. So we decided that we wanted to make it difficult. Granada was the city we wanted to live in. So this pueblo was, was about an hour outside of the city of Granada. The city has so much to offer, so much culture, so much history. Once we got our placement and I found out exactly where we were located, I was already like scheming of ways we can possibly live in Granada and commute. We searched in the Facebook group looking for people who were trying to sell their cars. We found one person who was selling a Nissan Primera 2001 beater. No, it wasn't a beater. No, it, it, was, it was a decent car. Um, it got us from point A to point B, which is all we were asking for. So yes, we decided we were going to live in Granada and commute by driving this car. And I mentioned that we're getting a car uh, to my cousin. And my cousin asked the brilliant, very obvious question of, is this car that you guys are getting, is it manual or automatic? The question that should have been asked months prior, but we had not even thought about it in the midst of everything else we were doing. So obviously we asked the owner and he said it was a manual car. Neither of us knew how to drive a manual car. I had tried to learn, but I was always way too scared to actually do it like on the actual road. I was terrified. He has no experience of driving sticks. So it's like the pressure is all on me and I'm literally driving a manual car, which I barely know how to drive in the center of Madrid like the capital of Spain. We're stalling in the middle of <laughs> the middle of the road, in the middle of the city. Cars are honking at us. And then the next day, 
we had to drive it four or five hours from Madrid to Granada. Mm-hmm. By the will of God, we made it. Um, my anxiety levels, I've never <laughs> experienced anything like that, but we made it. So. so after finally making it to Granada, we had our next task, which was to find an apartment. Granada is a city that students flock to for some reason, and everybody's looking for an apartment at the same time. But fortunately, after searching, we found one place that we really, really liked. It was the first tour we did. It had an amazing terrace, an amazing view over all of these beautiful houses in Granada. You could see the Sierra Nevada to the left side. Yeah, so we had, we had, a, we had a perfect, almost perfect piece. So obviously, it was too good to be true. It was way too good to be true. The third day, we're staying at our new apartment. We start noticing red bites, bug bites or something on our bodies, all over our arms, our backs, our legs. I've never had a bug bite like that. Uh, They were like hard little red bumps, super itchy. By that point, the second night after when we'd had those, we realized there was no other explanation other than bed bugs, which we didn't think to check any of the beds. Which we've learned our lesson. So yes, we had bed bugs in our apartment. The next day is our first day of school. I had to wake up at 6 o'clock the next morning to commute to work. We're saying all this, but we made it hard on ourselves. We did. <laughs> by choosing to live in Granada, by choosing to buy a car, by choosing to commute an hour away. But, you know, it makes, it makes for a great story. It makes mm-hmm. for, for, for this right now. We text our landlord and we tell her the problem that there's these bed bugs in the apartment. We were kind of looking for them to say, okay, like we will replace everything. Some type of solution. The solution they came up with was to leave a can of Raid X. What they wanted us to do is spray the beds and just leave it for 24 hours. But if you know the chemicals that are in Raid X, then you would understand why this is a health hazard. Finally, whatever. They change the mattresses, they switch the couch. Moral of the story is, wherever you go, always check for bed bugs. As we got further and further along in our experience in Spain, the weeks and the months just started to fly by. By the time we got to spring break, it was April. One morning in April, it was pouring rain, just, just pouring rain. We drag ourselves out of bed. We start driving. We're about 30 minutes outside of our our pueblo. And I just begin to feel the car like losing control. I'm trying to do everything to get the car like back straight, but there's nothing I could do. The car literally turns around on the highway. We're faced the other way on the highway. And after that, we just made impact. And my neck snapped back like that. And then after all this, the car literally just starts flipping. Thank God for seatbelts because our bodies would have probably been all over the place. It all happened super fast. At that point, after he lost control, we both knew what was happening. Like, we already accepted that this is what's going to happen. Like, I feel like there was no time for fear to even come up in my body. It just happened. It all happened happened within like 10 seconds. Yeah, it happened within like 10 seconds. When we flipped up, you were like, Are you okay? And I was like, Yeah. (laughs) And we both just (laughs) were very grateful in that moment that we were alive and we were okay. It's one of those times you gotta thank God. Got in a wreck, it rolled about four times. And now we're in a ditch. Thank God we're okay. I just remember it being like a movie scene. Like <laughs> everything was in slow-mo, glass was flying everywhere, like dirt was everywhere. Arms were just flailing. I was like screaming. <laughs> it's crazy because like we almost died in this moment and something just like was like, nah, not today, which was incredible. And we're just like extremely grateful. We survived and we're grateful. Our car was Severe. done. Rest in peace. Now we don't have the transportation. We were lucky enough to be able to stay with our dear friend, Crystal. Thank you, Crystal. Um, in her beautiful little apartment during the weeks. So after these trying months, we finished the school year. 
we would like to just share some of the things that we loved about living in Spain this year and some of the things that we did not love. Let's start with the don't love. My first don't love here is the Spanish bureaucracy. <laughs> Listen, if you ever want anything done in Spain, if you ever want some paperwork to, to be notarized, immigration status changed, or anything like that, be prepared for you to be told no. A whole bunch of confusion. It's a lot of finger pointing. But that's something you just have to be prepared for in Europe. And you have to build the emotional strength to deal with it. I think that's probably my least favorite thing as well. Something that I also did not love, there are extreme temperatures on both ends. So winters are really, really cold. We suffered in the winter. We really suffered. And then the summers are really hot. Like you cannot leave your house. You can't, like you don't want to move. It's, it's, it's not fun. Let's talk about a couple of things that we do love about living here in Spain. It's being in a place where you can hear multiple languages, be immersed in, in multiple cultures, especially here in Granada. You have a mix of the Spanish influence and then you have a, another mix of the Moroccan, North African influence. Being on the street, hearing French, Italian, Portuguese, Mandarin, English, all in one, one walk are all things that I love and all things that I was looking for when coming to Europe, so. Something that I love is the cost of living in Southern Spain. It's extremely cheap. <laughs> you don't have to constantly worry about paying all this stuff. The rent is really cheap. And also another thing included in the cost of living is getting groceries is a lot cheaper. Specifically to Granada is tapas. If you get a drink, you will get like a little plate of food with that for free. It's amazing. <laughs> Comparatively, the U.S. to Spain is, it's like another world. You can buy a bottle of wine, of good wine, Spanish wine, for maybe two, three euros. In the States, these same bottles are priced around like 16, 20, 20 dollars, something like that. Another thing that we really love is just the relaxed lifestyle. A lot of time in America, you can get caught up in working so much and then only having a little bit to enjoy after paying bills, after getting groceries, after taking care of your kids. In Spain, it's a little bit more about living more than you work. A lot of times during the weekdays, you'll see people out having a drink, just enjoying enjoying the weather, enjoying life in general. All of those things, along with meeting some really, really amazing people, have been my favorite things. I think the people that you meet abroad are some of the people that teach you the most, even just in these fleeting exchanges that you have with them. It's really worth it because you make connections all over the world. You learn so much about yourself and about other people, about growing, just having different mindsets, and that's something that to me is invaluable. You have to be prepared to just be flexible, and if, if things aren't going your way, just, just be prepared to just take a seat and just take a rest for a while and then revisit it later, which is something I love about about. Spain. Thank you guys for tuning in and listening to our experiences. We have another year. Yeah. We have yeah. So. But somewhere new. Somewhere new. Yeah. So stay tuned for all of that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Nos vemos. Hasta luego. Arrivederci. Bonjour.